Uh, first time I've slept in late for reasons other than being a loafer. Seems like Kobe's already up. Either that or he just dropped me off and went back clubbing. The whole thing still feels kind of surreal. Should check my phone and see if I ended up getting any new contacts. Or if it was just one of those weird dreams. Don't do this to me. D get out of the way with the freaking... Alright, so... Shift. I will save. Right there. I'll bet everybody's like, dude, you freaking, you you lost it with the bunny chick. But I don't care. I got girls that I liked. A girl, a boy, and a maybe. <laughs> I say a maybe, <laughs> like yes, no, maybe. But I, either the either way, I'm like a yes for all of these guys. Oh, Seth. I need to call Seth because he wanted to go to the to the book thing today. Finish the pro. Dude, I that was only a prologue? That young feline rider seemed interesting. He said he'd be heading to the library today. Maybe I can still catch him. Ring. Ri. Click. Urf. Hello? Hi, it's Kelly of the Indubitable from Amora. Amorous. Why do I keep trying to... You mentioned I should give you a call today. And since I just rolled out of bed, I figured now was as good a time as any. Kelly of the Indubitable? Oh, right. The interviewee. I'm glad to hear you called back. I just whoop. Okay, I'm okay. Ahem. I'm just on the way to library now. It's a great day for us, Drew. Oh, jipes. <laughs> Loud thought on the other end of the phone was followed by some muttering and grunting. Apparently, I distracted him in the middle of something. Is this a bad time to call? Seems like you're having difficulties there. No, 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 no. I just had a few books I'd been meaning to return before they became overdue. Though sometimes I think the only reason the library stays open is because of the fees I wind up paying. Makes sense. Ha, Samson. It's not a Samsung, it's a Samson. Take a fairly avid reader as well. Definitely, one can't expand one's horizon enough. I'm just about to head inside. Do you want to drop by and meet me in the lobby? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Sure, let me just get reasonably decent and I'll pop right over. Oh, you never told me when the reading was. I hope I didn't miss it. Reading? Oh, oh no. What time is it? Glad to get the clock. I saw it was a little after 10. After I mentioned it to Seth, he seemed to calm down. Because it's at 12, dude. That's what he said. He said it's at, he said it's at noon. 12. Reading at noon. In the community room. That's what he just said. Good. Well, I've got another plan this morning, so I'll drop by since you'll already be there. We said our goodbyes. As I tried not to flinch every time an I... Hit, heard, head, and heard another book drop on the other end, and I hopped out of bed to get dressed. Despite not needing to rush, I did feel a little concerned about making him wait. I scooped up some clean clothes and got myself as close to presentable as possible. Ah, uh, Kobe was stumbling around the kitchen, bleary eyed, and in nothing but his underwear as I was heading towards the door. And where are you off to in a rush? I'm going to put on clothes. Your exhibition is the bird blue. What are you? Are you blue jay? I know you ain't a robin. Because robins are red. And green with yellow capes. And black masks. I'm just meeting someone. Found an interesting guy at the club last night. And he invited me to an event. Ooh, first date, huh? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It might be a date. We gotta figure out how he feels. Don't get started, little bro. I heard everything that happened last night when you and your friends got back here. Okay, okay, have fun. But I expect a full report. I promise. We'll dish you all about him later. Later's good. Right now I need coffee. And a shower. I am covered in jizz. Kobe followed his beak back into the kitchen as I made my way out the front door. Man, I like I prefer the, the nighttime trees and stuff. They're all like purple and blue. It's really cool. Honestly, I haven't been to the public library in ages. Between work and Kobe's nightlife, I'd be too pre too occupied to think about culture. Probably why I was curious about this feeling. Not that my friends were dim, far from it. But it's just that I have no friends at all. 
Last night was all about trying new things, so I figured this was another tick mark off the newest bucket list. His adorably nerdy look may have also had some influence on my choice. Yeah, he was pretty cute. True to his word! Seth had found us a couple of seats close enough to enjoy the reader, but not in immediate view. Everyone else was getting settled in. Settled in. So I managed to take, make, de, to make it to my seats with a minimum of fuss. Seth beamed at me before turning his attention back to the front of the room. Nick Kovac? Why does that sound familiar? I, that sounds very familiar. Is that a reference to something that I'm just that's flying over my head for some reason? The dew had settled on the lawn just outside the front door, glistening in the last few rays of moonlight. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kid? I didn't finish reading that. It I xed the thing out, and it not cool. Dude, I freaking even waited for all of the pop-ups to go, to get done popping up. The moment I start recording, this always happens. I can't even prevent it. I didn't know who was being read or who the author was. The placard just outside the room had a few bits of information on it, but nothing that rang a bell. Seth chuckled quietly, likely due to my confused expression. I know I'm so much, I'm so freaking cute, right? Mr. Kellyo the Indubitable. I, I'm cuter than Seth. His name is Nick Kovac. He's one of my favorites for a light read. Blood was the color of the clouds and the same unwashed crimson spilled in rivulets across the floor before him. It was a body emptied of life and a life empty of meaning. What a pretentious douche. Light read, what definition of the word light are you using? Ah, I'm a pretentious douche whenever it comes to my writing, too. I wrote a book. Nobody read it. Anyway, it's genre fiction, murder mystery with a little thriller thrown in for spice. He's got a way with words that really captures the imagination. The sounds of boots rattling the windows and shaking the shutters pulled him from his reverie. Too soon. They would be upon him, and thereafter he would join the woman he discovered upon the paving stones. It's certainly hard not to, f to not form a mental image. You've read a few of his books? All 14 in the current series. I found him midway through the second, so I got some insights I shouldn't have into the first. It ruined the mystique for me, and I haven't been able to bring myself to try reading them. Hmm. That... Hold up, this, this thought here makes no sense. He has read all 14 in his current series. I found him midway through the second. The second book of the series? The second series? So I got some insight. The first book? Insights into the first book? I I don't know what this is supposed to mean, but you're cute, Seth. I'll forgive you. Fourteen? How many has he written in total? Oh, about twenty-eight or so. He's prolific, sure, but that's why he does so well. Two staccato shots rung out across the bad fields, and the pang of heat and pain ratted... Ratitated? <laughs> ratitated from his shoulder. He held secrets best left unspoken, and his pursuer meant to silence him forever. You said you were doing some research for your own story. How far along is that one? Even in the dim light, I could see a frown creasing in the corners of his mouth. He sunk back into his chair for a moment before whispering his response. I haven't even started it. I've given words away that... and of making me negative in word count. I actually owe publishers money. Honestly, not well as well as I'd hoped. 
Writing is a very private vocation, but that makes it even harder when you stare at an empty room and a blank page. I admit, I am here in part to hopefully absorb some of his ambient genius in the hopes of inspiring myself to put pen to paper. Dude. It's all up here. All up here. You don't need to go out. You stare at an empty room and a blank page. The blank page, I'll admit, is a little bit uh, demoralizing if, you, if you're looking at it and nothing has come up. But, the empty room, you don't need experience. All you need is imagination. I mean, a good logical brain works too, where you can put this event into this event, making this outcome, and make it make sense. A lot of people have that problem, is that a lot of their stuff just doesn't make sense. A good example, Superman versus, ba Batman versus Superman, the Martha thing. It was a weak, it was a weak reason for Batman to change his entire motivation through the entire story in that one split second. Also, why wouldn't he be like, Mom, that's another stupid thing. That event mixed with that event does not create that outcome if you're logical and have a good imagination. So just look at the club here trying to gain inspiration through osmosis. Sometimes I make it sound more desperate than I intended. You are desperate. And you don't realize that if you have a good imagination, you don't need to go out into the world. Uh, uh, I'll offer help. Look for a sounding board or just some input. I'd be more than happy to help you out with that. Really? I mean, really? Yes. I just said that. I'm always offering that to people. And even in real life. His eyes were wide with what I could only assume was excitement as I nodded. He was cute, intelligent, and interesting. Why not take some time to help him out? Maybe he'd even put me in the forward. This is fantastic. Why don't we go grab some lunch after this? My treat. I'll give us some time. It'll give us some time to chat above a whisper. Oh, I'm supposed to be whispering this. Sounds good! I didn't have a chance to grab anything before I had it out the door. His grin was infectious, and I couldn't help but smile before he turned back and settled into his seat. He was really excited at the prospect. Who knew it would be that easy to get a lunch out of him? I don't know. Far worse than the iron bars and rain-sickened concrete of the cell was the knowledge that escape would be impossible. Beyond those walls, he was hunted man. And uh, he was a hunted man, and only within their icy embrace could he hope to live another day. Seth nudged me as applause rolled through the room. I guess I hadn't been paying as much attention as I thought. The two of us made out. I wasn't paying attention to this dude at all. I don't, I'm not trying to bang this dude, okay? I'm trying to bang this dude. Uh, the two of us made the way through the crowds back out the lobby. It was there that I noticed the small wooden table with the pile of books on it and the author's picture on a stand. Seth so was busy chatting with some of the other attendees, so I found a place to sit down nearby. When he finally stepped away, he made a beeline for me. I've never understood the expression beeline. Do bees just make a line? Hold up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna freaking, I'm looking up bee line. Bee line. Definition. A straight line between two places. Origin. That's what I, origin was right there. Early 19th century with reference to the straight line supposedly taken instinctively by a bee when returning to the hive. Oh, I didn't know that. We've all learned something here today. Alright, there's a nice little coffee shop down the road. I've got a couple of books to grab before we go so I can meet you there, or you can wait for me. Apparently Seth hadn't noticed the signing table or the author heading in that direction. He did mention enjoying his books. 
I'll secretly get a signed book. Why don't I just wait and I'll see you back here in a sec. Excellent. It'll, I'll be just, just be a moment. Blah, 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 blah.